Imagine this, you didn't click any link, install any app or hand out your phone number, yet right now a hacker could be listening to your phone call. They could be reading your private text messages in real time, without you ever knowing. It doesn't matter if you're using iPhone or Android, SS7, or Signaling System 7, is the ancient protocol that still controls how telecom towers communicate behind the scenes. It was designed decades ago with one fatal flaw, it trusts everyone inside the network, and hackers know how to weaponize that trust. All they need is access to a rogue or compromised telecom provider. From there, they launch silent attacks that trace your location, intercept your SMS messages, and even listen to your live phone calls. In real time. This isn't fiction, this is an SS7 attack. And it's quietly being used by cyber criminals, rogue governments and surveillance companies all over the world. Let's break down exactly how hackers exploit SS7 to intercept your phone calls and SMS, and what you can do to stay safe. SS7, or signaling system number 7, is a set of protocols that lets mobile networks around the world communicate with each other. It's the invisible backbone that makes sure your calls and texts reach their destination, no matter which provider you use or where you are. Think of SS7 as the universal language for telecom companies, connecting billions of devices globally. When you send a text or make a call, SS7 handles the behind-the-scenes handshake between networks. But here's the catch. SS7 was created in the 1970s, when telecom operators trusted each other completely, like neighbors passing notes over a backyard fence. There's no encryption, no real authentication, just blind trust between networks. It was never designed for today's internet-connected world. That trust is now a huge security flaw, like leaving your front door wide open for hackers to walk right in. Here's the scary part. If an attacker gets into the SS7 network, they can track your real-time location, follow your movements city to city, and even pinpoint you to a specific building. It's not just about knowing where you are, they can build a complete profile of your daily routine. They can intercept and read every SMS you send or receive, including those one-time passwords for two-factor authentication. That means your private conversations and security codes are wide open to them. Imagine logging into your bank, and a hacker silently grabs your 2FA code before you even see it. Or they could eavesdrop on your private calls, listening in without you ever knowing. Sensitive business calls, personal conversations, nothing is safe. They can even disrupt or block your network, making your phone suddenly lose service, or reroute your calls so they hear everything first. You might think your call dropped, but it's actually being hijacked, and guess what? You won't see any signs it's happening, no warnings, no pop-ups, nothing at all. Your signal will still show full bars, your apps will work fine, but everything, your texts, calls, and even your location, is being silently copied and sent to the attacker. This is what makes SS7 attacks so terrifying. It's invisible, it's silent, and it could happen to anyone, without you ever knowing. What tools do hackers use to exploit SS7? Let's break down the most common ones and what they do. Most attacks use a mix of open-source frameworks and underground software including SS7, Maper lets hackers send malicious packets in the SS7 network, probing for weaknesses and manipulating call or SMS routing, Sigploit, a popular open-source tool that makes launching SS7 attacks easier, even for those with basic skills. Osmocom simulates mobile networks so attackers can test their methods safely. Yate BTS creates fake cell towers to intercept calls and trick phones into connecting. Wireshark sniffs and analyzes SS7 data packets, helping spot vulnerabilities or attacks. Docker and Kaylee Linux help hackers build custom SS7 attack stacks for more complex operations. But none of these tools work without access to the SS7 network. And while that access isn't public, it's not impossible to get. Hackers have several ways to break into the SS7 network, and most of them are shockingly simple. SS7 was designed decades ago, when trust between telecoms was assumed, not questioned. First, hackers might partner with or infiltrate a telecom company, gaining access from the inside. Many small telecoms worldwide have weak security, making them easy targets for cybercriminals. Sometimes hackers bribe or manipulate insiders, employees who already have access to SS7 systems. Second, the dark web is a marketplace for SS7 access. 
Hackers can buy credentials or even rent SS7 as a service. With these services they can launch attacks from anywhere in the world, often with little technical expertise. Third, some hackers set up rogue telecom companies, posing as legitimate providers to get direct access. In some countries registering as a telecom operator is surprisingly easy and cheap. Once approved, they get direct access to the SS7 backbone, letting them attack from inside the system. Once inside, hackers can send silent SS7 commands like send me the victim's location, forward their SMS messages to this number or redirect their phone calls through my gateway. All of this happens invisibly, the victim has no idea their calls or texts are being hijacked. Let's look at some chilling real-world examples of SS7 abuse. In 2017, hackers in Germany used SS7 to intercept text-based OTPs from banks. After phishing for logins, they rerouted SMS codes and drained accounts. Journalists have also been targeted. Government-linked groups used SS7 to track journalists' movements and communications. No malware needed, just network-level surveillance. Some crypto investors lost millions after attackers intercepted their two-factor authentication SMS codes. These aren't isolated incidents, SS7 vulnerabilities are being exploited worldwide. Here's the reality. SS7 is a protocol controlled by your carrier, so you can't patch or fix it yourself. But you can still take action to protect your privacy. Start by switching from SMS-based two-factor authentication to app-based options like Google Authenticator or Authy. These are much harder for hackers to intercept. For even stronger protection, use a hardware security key. Next, use encrypted messaging apps like Signal, Threema, or Session instead of regular SMS. These keep your chats private and bypass telecom networks. Enable a SIM lock with a strong PIN and turn off roaming when you don't need it. Roaming can trigger SS7 vulnerabilities. Watch for delayed messages, missed calls, or odd notifications. These could be warning signs. If you're sharing sensitive info, use airplane mode or Wi-Fi calling on trusted apps. Stay alert, and make SS7 attacks useless by refusing to rely on SMS or voice calls for security. The telecom industry has known about SS7 vulnerabilities for years. Still, many carriers rely on outdated systems that are easy targets. Some have upgraded to protocols like Diameter, but even those aren't perfect. Until the industry fully upgrades, SS7 remains a global risk. Every call, every text, every code can be hijacked by skilled attackers. SS7 attacks reveal that even the core of our mobile networks is vulnerable. This isn't about malware or phishing, it's about flaws in the very system your phone depends on. Stay alert, stay informed, and don't blindly trust your telecom provider to protect you. If this video opened your eyes, just imagine what else is happening behind the scenes in cyberspace. Like this video to help more people discover these hidden threats. Share this with someone who still uses SMS for two-factor authentication. And subscribe for weekly deep dives into real hacker techniques, tools, and digital defenses. See you in the next one.